Our last application of constrained least squares is linear quadratic state estimation. Uh, like the other two applications, you can take an entire course on nothing but this. Um, and it's also, like the other two, very widely used in a lot of application areas. It's got other names, like Kalman filter or something like that, but it's still it's used everywhere. All right, let me give you the setting. Actually, the setting is very similar to the control problem, uh, but uh, actually the problem is quite different, although they are, they are also closely related. I'll explain that. So we start with the linear dynamic system model. That's exactly what we did before. Oh, there's a, a bit of a difference here. Um, in fact, a bunch is different, so I'm going to emphasize it compared to control. Um, so here, um, I, I have an input, but I'm using the traditional term WT. Um, so WT is actually not uh, an input that we have control over. WT is actually supposed to be like a, a weird disturbance or, or measure. It's something like um, it's process noise or input disturbance, right? That, that, that's the idea. And here, YT is not just CTXT. It's also got this VT term. And VT is the measurement noise or measurement residual, and that's a p vector. So that's a so you have these measurements. Um, that's the idea. Now in the state estimation problem, uh, here here's the here's a statement of the problem. Uh, I'll I'll tell you what AT, BT, CT are, and I'm going to tell you what the measurements are y1 through yt. So that that you know, and your job is this: estimate or guess the state sequence. That's, that's the goal, okay? Um, oh, I should say that these two noises, the process noise and the measurement noise, WT and VT, they're, they're not known, uh, but they're assumed to be small. And that's going to be how we're going to formulate a constrained least squares problem out of this to, to, to solve state estimation problem. Okay, so here, here's how we're going to formulate it. We're going to say, we're going to minimize. Again, there are two objectives. Um, so, and basically what these come down to is uh, very simple. Um, this is nothing, that's V1. Uh, this is V capital T. And so basically the, the two terms are here. Uh, we can either come up with a state sequence where we make the W's small, or we can make the, the V small. And that's actually, the, these are the two objectives. And of course, we're going to scalarize it um, and with a uh, with a positive parameter uh, in between them to, to trade off. And so this is the measurement error plus the uh, process error. And then we'd say subject to the dynamics, right? So so what we're really going to do is the is we're actually the states are, the vari the state the variables in our optimization problem are going to be the state sequence, also the input noise sequence, right? No, we don't care about the input noise sequence, but the idea is we need it so that we can express the idea that it's small. Okay, um, so here they are. The measurement noise is simply the sum of the squares of the VTs. Um, the secondary objective is going to be the sum of squares of the process noise. Um, and lambda, as I said, uh, is a parameter that we can trade off. Um, now, I should say here, in the state estimation problem, unlike the control problem, we're actually going to have a, a non-ad hoc, a, a principled method by which to choose uh, lambda. We'll see that we're going to be able to do that by cross-validation. So that's coming later. All right, so we are going to take this problem and we are going to do the same thing we did in the control and we're simply going to make it a giant constrained least squares problem. Um, I, I say giant because, you know, it, it could have thousands of variables, but again, it is just simply not a non-problem. Uh, so, okay. So, um, all right, here it is. So this is our objective. Uh, here's our objective is we have to minimize the, 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 the sum of the squares of the process noise plus lambda times the sum of the squares, sorry, sum of the squares of the measurement errors noise plus this lambda times the sum of the squares of the process noise. That's the W's. Um, and so again, we're going to write it as a giant constrained least squares problem. The we're going to concatenate all the all the vectors to get uh, into one vector, um, all of our variables. So x1 up to xt, w1 up to wt minus one. We're just going to concatenate them into one vector. And now we have to say what is a tilde, b tilde, c tilde, and d tilde. Um, well, here they are. Um, actually, they look shockingly close to the same to the matrices you saw in the control case. Um, they are very, very, very close. Um, and that hasn't escaped people. 
the fact that there's this very close mathematical connection between the control problem and the estimation problem. In fact, I guess people refer to these as dual problems, which I'm not going to go into, but it means that they're intimately related. Um, note that they're actually very different though, right? In, in the control problem, there's an input that we imagine that we have control over and we're saying, what should it be? Like, how should I operate my airplane, you know, or something like that, right? Um, here, however, uh, it's, we, we observe some measurements um, and, uh, and the goal is to estimate the state. So it's really, uh, it's a bit different. Okay, so I won't go into auditing this or maybe we can take a look at one, one you know, these, I think by now you should be able to read this, that C tilde times Z equals D tilde. This first row is basically a state update. It says A1 times X1 minus X2. That's this term. That's A1 times X1 minus X2 plus B1 U1 equals zero. But that's, that's, the, that's the state. That says X2 is A1 is a X1 plus uh, B1 U1. That's, so this is dynamics equations. Okay. So we solve this problem, um, and and uh, and it's just a big constrained least squares problem. And it's once again very sparse, so we can solve it extremely efficiently. Actually, even more efficiently than that, because it's more than it's actually not just sparse, but it actually has a structure called banded. It doesn't matter. It's just we can solve it super efficiently. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about something else, which is uh, missing measurements, um, and this is going to be our pathway to a rational method. Uh, a non-ad hoc method for choosing the the parameter uh, in, in in here the the uh, the lambda here. Okay, so missing measurements goes like this. Um, let's suppose they have a bunch of measurements uh, y t, uh, but only for t uh, in 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 for certain times. So for example, at certain times you just don't get any measurements. Oh, by the way, I should say we can make this even more complicated and say that certain Individual components of Y usually are associated with different sensors. And so, like, we could say that, oh, in any time period, one or more sen sensors might fail. And then, so we can make this more complicated if we like, but this is good enough. Um, so what we do is we just say at certain times, we just, we have no measurements. Just, there just aren't any. Sorry, I'd like, we don't have any measurement. Uh, okay. And so script T is going to be the subset of 1 to T for which we have measurements, right? So... No. And if, if you want to think of uh, measurements, uh, here'd be a typical application of this in navigation. Um, we could be trying to figure out, you know, where, where we are or where a target is. And the different measurements could be things like multiple radars uh, illuminating it and making an estimate of position or something like that. Or if it's on a single, if it's a single airplane, you could be attempting your, your estimates could be things like um, it could be accelerometers, uh, some kind of a radar altimeter. Uh, it could be uh, all sorts of things like that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, measurements for T, I should say. There we go. Not in T are missing. There we go. Okay. Small typo. That's fine. Um, so, to estimate the states, you use the same formulation, but what we do is we only, of course, uh, take the, um, we, we, what we do is only for the, for only, only for when we have the measurements, uh, do we, do we contribute to this, uh, JMEJ thing. Okay. Um, now if I, when I perform the state estimation problem, I'm going to get X sub T for T not in script T. And then that's going to be my estimate of y hat. Yeah. And you can see that we're getting, I mean, you should be, it's, it's kind of cool because you'd say, well, I didn't make that measurement in that. I didn't get a measurement in that period. And, and then we can say, oh yeah, well, we think the measurement would have been, had you had a measurement, it would have been y t hat, which is c x t hat. Okay. Um, now, by the way, that's the key to being able to cross validate, obviously, because I just, I pretend that a measurement didn't come in and I don't have it, but the truth is I have it. In other words, I keep it, I, I, I keep it in reserve exactly as in data fitting. It becomes a, a test measurement. Okay. So I don't give it to the state estimator and the state estimator still pretends it's missing and says, oh, sorry, I don't have that. 
it estimates it, and then the state estimator is going to make a prediction of that. But I've secretly held back the actual measurement yt, and now I can compare yt and yt hat. And if they're close, my state estimator is doing really well. And that's exactly the same as like an out of, you know, out of sample test or some kind of validation test in data fitting. In fact, it's precisely that. All right, so we're going to look at an example. Um, and it's got, uh, that, that's the, the dynamics matrix A, they're constant, that's B, that's C. And this is essentially, uh, a, it's a very simple model of a mass moving in a two-dimensional plane. Um, where xt is its position and its velocity, right? Each of which is a two vector, so it's a four vector. Um, and then what we're going to get is we're going to get the true position, that's ct, xt, plus wt, um, and that's going to be a noisy measurement of position. So what c says is we're going to get a position, uh, we're going to get a position s, the x and y position estimates, and there'll be noise on it. So it's actually quite simple. We have 100, we'll do a, a, a horizon of 100 time steps. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at it. <laughs> so here's, here's, uh, here's what you would know. The input to the uh, state estimation problem, the green circles show us the actual measurements made, right? Um, the black line shows you the actual trajectory of the state, okay? Um, now, of course, in the state estimation problem, we don't know the dark line. Right. That's in fact the whole goal is to guess the dark line. Now you know you can look at this and your eyeball can see that, you know these are the estimates of the state. Um, your eyeball can see that you know it looks something like the black line because they kind of follow each other. Um, okay, so hopefully that will emerge from from this state estimation method. Okay, so we have a hundred noisy measurements. All right, um, <coughs> let's do state estimation now um, with different values of lambda. Um, so here's lambda equals one, and, and, and the blue line shows you our state estimate. And, um, okay, look, your eyeball tells you right, off, right away, well, look, that's not good, because it's, it's, it's actually what people would say, it's following the noise. That's what it is. That, this one is following the noise. Um, when lambda is a thousand, that's doing very nicely, thank you. That's, that, is, that is actually a very nice estimate right there of, of the state. Um, and when it's 10 to the 5, um, it's not a good estimate now, and um, and I, I you know we can we can easily uh, explain this. Um, roughly speaking, when lambda is one, it means you trust the sensor these are these noisy sensor measurements. That's these green circles. You trust them too much, and as a result, your estimate of where are you is wiggling around too much. I'm I'm anthropomorphizing this, but you get the idea. Um, when lambda is ten to the five. Basically, you're saying you barely trust, you don't, you don't trust the sensors like at all. Uh, and so you want, you want to, what you're going to do is have large sensor errors to explain what it is. And so you end up with something that looks like that, right? So that's the idea. Okay. Now, in this case, well, okay, we know what the exact solution is. It's kind of clear that lambda equals 10 to the 3 is about right. But let's see how we would do this with cross-validation or va validation, I should say. Um, so here's what we do. We just r randomly remove 27 of the measurements and, and use that as a test set. Um, then what we do is for, you know, a ten, some, you know, 10, 20, 30 values of lambda, we do the complete estimation problem um, and we use the other measurements. And when they say what happened to the 20% of the measurements that aren't there, we just say missing, just missing. It's a lie. We actually have those measurements. We're just holding them in escrow so that we can actually see how well our system works our state estimation works. Um, and then what we do is we evaluate the RMS measurement error um, on the test set. Uh, that's fair because we're actually, you know, we've held back those things and we're actually checking like how, how big is the RMS thing. Then what you do is you choose lambda to approximately minimize the RMS test residuals. Sound familiar? It should because this is exactly data fitting with uh, regularization. Okay, so for that example, this is what it looks like. Um, as I increase lambda um, <coughs> on the training set, I just get worse and worse, right? Um, but on the test set, it's actually super interesting that as I increase lambda, I start, I actually start doing better. I go from, you know, above 40 down to, I don't even know what that is, high 20s, right? And it also kind of suggests you should pick lambda right in there, which is, you know, coincidentally what we did. Um, now, above that is, is you get very bad uh, examples. And sure enough, lambda equals 
10 to the 3 here is quite reasonable. Um, and now, look, the reason you want a, a method like that is, uh, is this, is that obviously in real applications, we don't know the, the state, the actual true state trajectory. We don't know it because that's the whole point of the problem is to estimate the state trajectory. So you don't have this, uh, this black line here to guide you. Not to mention, this doesn't happen usually in two dimensions or whatever, because there are four dimensions, because that's just way too small a problem, right? So this is, uh, and then you like, you're on your own trying to figure it out. And that's exactly where um, this kind of cross-validation method uh, will actually allow you to do this.